Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Tween in Middle School for Life. Well framed. At 23 hours and 20 minutes into the, uh, I think it's the 14th day. Uh, let me just get my, uh, yeah, 14th day of November. So, uh, yay for that. Put my phone away. Uh, we're doing something a little different today. Well, sort of. Is that the vlog has to sort of split again. Because the topic is getting rather large, and when, when the topic gets very lo rather large, we split into another uh, vlog because it warrants its own uh, particular section. That's the section of Gnosis, so we're going to go into a Gnosis vlog. So this is both the observation vlog and the Gnosis vlog once, all together at once uh, because uh, the topics will jump back and forth. So this is not only the observation vlog, but it is the uh, Gnosis vlog. And I'm talking about Gnosis. Gnosis is simply the Greek word uh, knowledge, but it's used to mean uh, everything that goes bump in the night. Ghost, with ghosts, witches, uh, demons, uh, hexes, curses, um, Illuminati, Freemasonry, the whole bit, the whole whole ball of wax. And this is where you come, and out of that ball of wax comes ley lines, uh, the metaverse, and of course, uh, the flat earthers come into this uh, as well because they're part of the uh, crowd that believes in a number of different things in terms of the control of the world and so on and so forth. And of course, you know, I've, I've got my hood on because it's cold out here, but nonetheless, it's symbolic because I've got the hood on and uh, it's covering one of my eyes and <laughs> the whole bit. Um, but the thing is, there is some seriousness behind it because, again, it's not about what I think. It's about what other people believe. The people at the top, the shadow government, the so-called ruling class, the ruling elite, all believe this stuff. They all are fully invested in it. And they, have to, they have to sacrifice to their gods. And this is what a large chunk of this is. Well, who's going to be sacrificed? Well, the, the upper elites are not going to be sacrificed, so you're going to choose a sheeple. And it choose one of the herd. The herd is, you know, the, the, the holy cow, the sacred cow, the sacred sheep, you know. Uh, there's uh, uh, Abraham sacrificing his son uh, Isaac, and God tells him not to, and instead he sacrifices a lamb. I mean, these, 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 this is all stuff from, uh, from an, agricultural, an, an agricultural society. So, they're going to think in these terms, but then what happens is the, the, these agricultural terms in a number of these sort of environments has been sort of turned on its head. And instead of being focused at animals, it's now focused at human beings. We're now going back into the case where we have human sacrifice. So human sacrifice, well, we, 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 oh, don't worry, we're, we're, just, we're, we're just sacrificing chickens or we're sacrificing this and Animals, primarily. But now we're coming back into the point, well, since they didn't mind about animals, then let's go back into full-on human, human sacrifices once again. So this is where things are going. Things are going into the realm of uh, human sacrifice, and this is kind of what we're seeing in terms of the masks and so on and so forth, which is primarily a panic. The more fear that can be created, the better. That's, that's the whole thing. <clears throat> And so we're living in a metaverse of fear. This is, and, and, and we see that a large chunk of the stuff, you know what goes on, it basically works. They're, they're LARPs, live action role play, works, and LARPs are basically the same thing. It's a somewhat scripted event. There doesn't necessarily have to be a completely scripted, but Somewhat to the point, as long as you know someone's going to behave a particular way, uh, it's getting cold out here, and so I need to zip up a little bit more and uh, uh, scrunch in closer. That means I probably need to sort of readjust the um, uh, the, the camera frame. Oh, 
it's hard feeling like this because it's near the end of the day for me in terms of uh, the uh, obs observational point. I've been out here since like 8 o'clock in the evening. And it's almost, well, oh. it's, it's 8 o'clock in the evening is 20 hours. It's 23 hours heading to 24. Uh, so I've been out here for three and a half hours. And my body started to get cold. <clears throat> And I checked and see you can't see my breath. I can see my breath, but the, the camera doesn't pick up my breath. The breath is sort of rolling out a, a fair amount of steam uh, as we're out here. But then again, I, I don't think there's enough light to sort of pick it up. I think that's probably part, part of the problem. Oh. So what happens is that we go back and start defining this, these terms like metaverse and gnosis and because in many cases, they're loosely defined. When you talk about something, you need to go from the general to the one more specific. A lot of times, the specific is simply missing. It's not going to be coming out there because the information is designed to be hidden and forbidden, right? If you have knowledge out there that's supposed to be forbidden, you got to make darn sure that it's hidden. It's not going to get out there. Of course, I'll give you an example of how these works occur. I have a friend or people that I know uh, who wanted to travel. They were dead set against... They, they, they were uh, being called anti-vaxxers. Unless, of course, there was a concert or a place they had wanted to go to. They want to fly to a particular place and vacation and so forth. But then they're lining up and getting the vax. Shh, don't tell anybody. I've been vaxxed. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Man, you should see... I got, I got The only reason I got... I'm still anti-vax, but I got the fact because I want to go to this concert, or I want to go to Florida, or I want to go to the Caribbean, and, or or some other place like that. And that's the only reason why they got the vax. Like it, it was simply there was something dangling in front of them. Like, okay, oh, get the vax. <laughs> and but this this is what it does. It, this, it, it illustrates the way people think. And it's not about it's not about these people who are idiots and so on and so forth. Is there something that in their interest that, that says Okay, I'm going to go off in this direction, even though I shouldn't be doing this. And this is this is well, the devil made me do it. Well, no, it's not the devil who made you do it. You did this because someone was being dangled in front of you, and you wanted it. And I see this over and over and over again. It, 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 you look at people's behavior, behavior, and 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 this is what happens with the argument. You'll look at these these arguments back and forth on Twitter. What the, what what are these arguments about? Primarily, arguments are about status. I'm of this and I'm of that. Right? And they list their different credentials and all the different, you know, PhD, MD, uh, DDS, and, you know, um, <laughs> PTSD. <laughs> They're a doctor of po uh, post traumatic syndrome. <laughs> They're an expert on it because they've had it for so long. Uh, No, there's another one. That's another one, but the other. Uh, oh yeah, it's a D D T S D T D D T S. Uh, that's Donald Trump syndrome or uh, a D D D D T S. Yeah, D D T S. Uh, you know, some some other. That's a, a, a Donald Trump disorder or something like that. I can't remember which one it is. But they're not, they're not that you could put these sort of these acronyms at the end of your name and give yourself credentials. The observation doesn't mean anything as a credentials that mean anything. And there's, there's there's no substance to the argument. Look at the arguments. There's no substance to it. There's nothing to there. What it is, it's a battle over status. And of course, most of these people, if you're about status, you're about, you are the, even from some of these professors who are the quintessential, uh, you know, prestigious professor, then it's about prestige. I mean, a lab rat will not, a lab rat, there's the professors who are lab rats or library rats. You'll never really see them out and about that much, or when they do, they're kind of disheveled and not necessarily good looking uh, because they've been in the lab all day long. You know, they need some sunlight, kind of pale because they need some sunlight. <laughs> um, they're not there for prestige. They're there for 
there's information that they want. They're going after that information, and they're going to stay there as long as it does. And well, of course, they until they drop dead. You go back into the lab. You go back into uh, the you know the library to see what's happened to that particular rat. Well, there it is. Uh, legs up in the air. It's now dead. And that's the end of that. But the thing is, is that the sort of animal analogy is what actually occurs is that we, as we begin to view human beings and animal, animals, there's no question, well, a person has the right to their own body. Uh, you know, the, the pro, pro-choice. You can't talk about that now. It's been accepted in society. And what is what is it? Well, the baby is not their own, their own body. It's its own body. The baby has its own body. Since when does any body part, like an arm or a hand, have its own, uh, have its own pulse? And own brain waves. None. That's another person. So yes, you have the right to your own body, but you don't have a right to somebody else's body. And nor do you have a right to kill people. That doesn't matter. Society has spoken. Everything's now accepted. Okay. So now, what's, what, what, that was a while ago. Now what, what, what's accepted? What's, what's sort of popping up? Well, there's now euthanasia of the elderly. Right? There's, there's people who they're, they're too sick. They're too sick to live. We need to be putting them out of their misery. And so let's have dying with dignity rules. The hospitals now they can't. They, there's not enough uh, bed spaces for emergencies and you know, infections and stuff like that. There's enough room to uh, create a uh, dying with dignity room or a ward. And these are the people who are going to be put to sleep with the doctor, and they're going to have nice music playing, and their family will be visiting and watching them die, and <laughs> the whole bit. And everyone thinks this is wonderful. That's because the animals are being put to sleep. We, the human beings are now animals. And this is what it was initially. This, this was uh, Edward Bernays, Sigmund Freud, Anna Freud, all had this understanding. And so do all the elites. We are not, the ones who are below the elites are not human beings. You're animals. And you're going to be treated like an animal. And when you're told to die, you're going to die. That's it. There, what's going on now is something basically called planned obsolescence. They're thinning the herd. They're thinning the herd. This, this is what it, all it's about. And it's been accepted by the majority of society. And so unless it inconveniences them, they're not going to care. They're not going to make any particular issue of this. This is why I say, well, 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 why aren't the courts listening? Because the courts are fully involved. Well, I talked this to this particular politician, and well, he said he'd do something, but he didn't actually do anything. Well, why? Because they're fully involved. They know what's going on. They know they, they have an understanding of what's happening. And of course, they know if they want to keep their position and their jobs as a senator or this or that within the government, then they're not going to say anything. They're not going to do anything. They'll tell you what you need to hear, what it sort of appease you. And say, oh, yes, yes, I'll look into this. But they're not going to do anything. And the thing is, is that, you know, I don't mean to badmouth Mrs. L, but I've seen this before. Right now, she's being humored. And they're doing this and they're doing that. Oh, yes, 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 we'll help you out. And he's passing these laws and so on and so forth. Has it reduced the number of people, be, who, uh, kids who are being trafficked on the internet? No. Not at all. They're still there. It's just in different forms. It, 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 it's the reimagining of things. I mean, this is, this, this is what happens, you know, uh, is that I, I do talk a lot to people. I'm the type of person who will talk to almost anybody, street people, this, that, or, you know. If they stop and say hi, and we sort of make eye contact, and we end up talking, then that's fine with me. I don't care who I'm talking to. Uh, most people, a lot of people aren't like that. They're afraid of people who are not basically like them. So, <laughs> but I talk to anybody. I've talked to prostitutes. I've talked to strippers. The whole bit. And remember this, is, and this is what I got in trouble for when I was young with my friends. Uh, guys are not supposed to talk to strippers. You're not supposed to talk to girls who are going to be your targets, who are going to be your score. You're supposed to simply, it's the work, it's the play, it's the, you know, you're going to be this player. Well, I was never a player. Um, in many cases, bullshit intolerant. 
Uh, I don't uh, sort of do well with bullshit. And so when it comes to sort of the, the girl says hello, I kind of forget what I'm doing. I, find, I kind of forget that I'm supposed to be on this hunt, and I say hello, and we have a conversation. And then, and then I get this look. You, you did it again, Dan. You did it again, Dan. Man, man you ruined the whole thing. They're now, <laughs> they're not going to do anything now. <laughs> and that's what, you know, strippers and what it is. As soon as you talk to them, they're not going to do things that they, they, the guys want. You're supposed to treat them treat them like crap or just, you know, say what they want to hear. And that's it. You're not supposed to care about these things. But I was never like that. And this is, I guess, it, it, in some ways, it just sort of produces a red pill moment. As we were at this concert for a, a guitarist uh, who, who was really, he wasn't mainstream. He was kind of off to the side. And, and it, these were, I was in a group of people who always talked about things being esoteric, non-mainstream, alternative, and Horns further off. So it's more than likely coming this way. See, off to the east, there's a field there where the trains come around. There's a huge open field, a large space. And a horn will only produce an echo like that if it's in the large open space. So it only does that when the train is coming westbound uh, around the eastern edge. When it comes this way, uh, from the left to the right, uh, what you hear is you'll hear the horn at the... Uh, the right side or the the eastern waveguide. That's where the horn will come out of. <clears throat> so I guess it, you can sort of sit there and people kind of kind of freak out about while well, I'm sitting here because it looks like I'm asleep, but I'm not. I'm using my ears. It is one thing to see something; it's another to use your hearing for observation. And you can well, if you don't if you do it enough, if you get enough practice, you can do it. Uh, blind people understand. So why do blind people kind of know where they are to a certain degree? Because they can hear what's going on around them, they can hear the footsteps, they can hear how this thing feels, how, how the banister feels, how a door feels. They they can feel it. That's actually what the, what the seeing eye cane is about. Is their feel is about. And this is why it's designed the way it's designed. It's about vibration, so they can feel around and feel the vibration of what's coming up in front of them. And so this is this is the nature of observation without sight. And when you got to understand that, you can also do observation without sight in terms of how people talk, the different uh, tones in their voices, the, the way they speak. These all become factors in observing human beings in the same manner you would observe stars or, or any other forms of observation. Uh, you can do this with your ears, and you, you can do the uh, psycholo psychological or soul, uh, soul observation. Uh, the psychological means soul. The psych part is is the soul, uh, and the lohi part of the words or the study of the soul. So it's there in in in, in its in its uh, well, reimagined form, and this is the problem: is we have a lot of stuff being reimagined, but the, the reimagining isn't new; it's simply an older form that comes back into it. this. Is you know, you talk about ley lines, you talk about flat earth. These are things that are, are, are believed in. again, flat earth. Is a reimagining of things, and it's also it's a, this is where you got what the people who talk about the uh, landing on the moon as being fake. Well, no, not necessarily. There are aspects within the film footage, uh, and, and if you've seen enough film footage uh, doing war, and you know your physics, there's a difference in between what we call water buoyancy, which is not neutral buoyancy, and something in space where you have low or zero gravity. Uh, in the space station, they don't have, it's not zero gravity, it's known as microgravity. Uh, on, uh, on the moon, there is, 
isn't it's not zero gravity, but it's also not microgravity either. It's a little bit more than microgravity because the moon has a particular mass. And the there are a number of ways in terms of the physics to get everything that you see in the picture. Once you get, and as a matter of fact, there's certain things than pictures in the movies that you can only get in space when you're in these conditions that, that, that they don't match up anywhere else. Uh, but again, you try to explain this to people to, to, to these you know flat earthers, the, uh, the the moon land, the fake moon landing people, and because they believe this stuff very strongly, uh, and. When you get into the physics, just the way with, with flat Earth, you get into the geometry, you get into the history, the history of geodesics, and sort of the geometry of that as well. It, this is, well, I'll, I'll explain it in another way. And this is my experience going through through uh, university, and I checked around several other places, it's about the same thing. Typically, with physics and the uh, mathematics involved with physics, uh, that's your uh, calculus. And these are not numerical calculus, forms of calculus. These are uh, abstract and symbolic. I mean, there's no numbers, it's all about theory. Um, you could start off with a class of maybe 100, 150 people in class. And these, these classes are already specialized. So the thousand, Students that you would get in a standard call a major class, they're not there. This is in the specialist honors. This is in the program where you're going to become a physicist. Right? You're going down that path. And it's your first course. And, of course, the professor says the same thing that they say to a lot of the people, just to scare them. And, of course, you get a lot of halas and hola ha. Take a look to the left. Take a look to the right. Okay, shake hands with them. Because by the end of the first term, one of these people is going to be gone. Of course, you're on the other side too, from from another person, and you know they're shaking your hand. That means at some point in time you have a risk of being gone after the first uh, term test. And you laugh, you do, la, 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 you know, it's you know <laughs> you have your fun with it. And lo and behold, October rolls around. Uh, you have a reading week, and then you get your 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 brought you're brought into the uh, the test, you give you the notes for the test, the syllabus for the test, and you're allowed to bring your textbook into the test. <laughs> hey, hey, go on there, open textbook, go ahead. Here's your, here's your exam. They give you, they gave us a standard uh, sheet, five questions on the sheet, those five questions, and they gave you three notebooks to write in for your exam. And no one can figure out why, you, you know, the, the, the test was face down, so they will turn it over and, and, and start. Right? And the rule is, you know, start with what you know the best. You know, you go read through it, pick the easiest one, and start there. You turn it over. You see there's five questions. And you read through them. And you should see them 10, 10, 20 minutes to read through them. And they typically read along the lines of, here is the Lorentz equation for the Einstein's theory theory of relativity, the, gen, the specific theory of relativity. Derive the equation from Galileo's equations of motion. This is this is the first term test. This is the first test of the year, and it's like, like huh? <laughs> you read through the that's the first one. You read through all that. There must be something simpler in here. They're all the same. They're all the same thing. Is derive this and derive that symbolically, theoretically. That's it. The only thing you knew how to do for sure on the test is put in your name. And what do you hear all of a sudden with, with, with it, 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 about a half hour passes and all you hear <laughs> and people start running out <laughs> because they couldn't answer anything on the test. You go back to you go back. I'm the type of person. Well, okay, I'm going to fail this. I know I'm going to fail this. You try your best. You just Jot down ideas as you know for all these different things. You you pass it in. You know you're gonna fail the whole thing. You got the test back. Yeah, okay, I failed. But well, wait a minute here. I got a B plus on this. How did I get a B plus? Well, because so many people in the class failed or even dropped out that the bell curve shifted to the so that an F would be now an <laughs> what would be an F would be is now a B or a B plus. 
that's that's, that's not necessarily the bell curve. Uh, the bell curve is often misunderstood. It's not an average, it's not a class average, but it rather is a just uh, um, Gauss is about, and that's the bell curve. Gauss is the mathematics, and it's about distribution. How, where is the class in terms of its distrib dis distribution of marks? And if your class has to be at a passing distribution, in other words, B, then if F is your standard, where, where all the classes, then that F gets moved up to a B. Because you can't have the whole entire class failing. So it doesn't matter who, there is no wrecking the bell curve in their proper understanding of, of uh, Gauss. And of course, these people were mathematicians, they were scientists who were grading a paper, so they understood. There is no wrecking, there is no wrecking of the curve. There is no you know, raising of the bar or anything like that because it has to do with dis dis distribution. A, a mark that is above or, or, or high level does not change significantly the distribution where the where where the uh, where the average student is. So it's an average student, but not an average mark. But again, it's not understood. It's not well understood. And the thing is that by the end of the first the first term test, there was about thirty people left in class. This is the reality. So when you go and try to explain something somebody to somebody, and you've got I've got 30 plus years of experience under my belt. This is after graduate school. How do you bring that 30 years of experience into, well, say, a question that, that they want answered within five minutes? Well, I want an in-depth answer. It can't be longer than five minutes. Because well, I've done the hour like this, and I've had the comments, and I've, the people, some of the people I knew who were watching things, huh? Didn't understand it. Didn't understand a word of what I was saying. And so this is the sort of the nature. This is the nature of, of the flat earthers. This is the nature of the uh, the anti-vaxxers. This is the nature of uh, the vaxxers because they're conspiracy theory as well. They're not anything outside of conspiracy theory uh, because they don't know what the what the actual work is. It's all hidden, but it's hidden by design. They want people to be confused. Look, another train. Sounds like it's westbound. The trains are lined up probably to go places. There's often so what happens if you go further as you go further east, the double track turns into a single track, so trains have to sort of line up and wait for their signal to go down that single path. And this is this is the primary this is the primary corridor uh, between uh, the car manufacturing plants in the east, uh, where Picker, Pickering and Oshawa is, and then the west this way. That's where Windsor and the border is, and so uh, any any goods that would be heading south to the border, like cars, which are produced in the east, would use this particular track. So as it, you know, you, you get to understand things as you do as it do the observation. Uh, you you spend your time out here like this, this is three hours, almost four hours, and you get a feel for things. You get a feel for how things go. And but as it, the people above the the, the 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 shadow government, they're gnostics. They believe in gods. They believe in, they believe in this demo, uh, demonic stuff. In addition to some of them who believe into in in very nasty things. And this is the way they function. This is the way they act. So gnosticism and having an understanding of gnosticism, as gnosis, and more particularly as metanosis. Is a requirement to understand what's going to go, what's going to happen. The whole written, written uh, the written house case 
has nothing to do with who wins and who loses. And it's going to take about two, three weeks for the dust to settle to really figure out what the next direction is. What this is, the Rittenhouse case, is a political uh, weather vane. You want to see which way the, the, the political winds are going to be blowing. And that's it for now, and I'll see you uh, probably tomorrow night, and there'll be two vlogs, one observation, and the other one uh, uh, knows his vlog. We are Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Queen in Middle School for Life.